wishbone Watch this your dream enough Such big imagination On such a little buck What's the story, wishbone? Do you think it's worth a look? It kind of seems familiar Like a story from a book Shake a leg now, wishbone Let's wag another Come on, Wishbone, what's the story, Wishbone? What's the story, Wishbone? What's the story, Wishbone? What's the story, Wishbone? Chase cats. <sighs> Hello, trying to sleep. Here you go, Wishbone. No thanks. Uh, sleepy, not thirsty. And now, if you two will kindly excuse me, I believe I hear a chair calling my name. I have to go into work for a while, Joe. Did you make any plans for today? Not yet. Sam was talking about a street hockey game down by the park. Oh. Well, just make sure you straighten your room before you leave the house. Mom, it's Saturday. Can I do it tomorrow? Well, what about your social studies paper? Isn't it due Monday? Yeah, I guess so. Well, when are you going to do that? Tomorrow. <sighs> Joe, you can't put everything off until tomorrow. Have you even started the paper? No. What's the subject? We're supposed to write about something our grandparents had that we wish was still around today. Oh. Did you pick a topic? No. Well, what about this? They're closing the old Hobrock plant. Nah, it's supposed to be something that we wish was still around. So, you got any better ideas? No, not really. I can't think of anything. Oh, there's my backpack. Excuse me, Wishbone. Uh, excuse me, did I live a wake-up call? Hey, after you've straightened up your room, why don't you come down to the library and do some research? I love you. I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, want to help me clean up? Hmm. Watch you work or sleep. Let me do some deep thinking about this. Mm, nope, I thought about it. I choose the nap. Wake me when you're finished. Give me a dog's life any day. A dog's life indeed. Ah, oh, lovely. Nothing like a good nap. The kind of nap old Rip Van Winkle used to take. Rip originated the power nap and remains the patron saint of slackards everywhere. Rip Van Winkle was written in 1819 by Washington Irving, one of America's first great authors. Rip Van Winkle lived in colonial America just before the Revolutionary War. He was a simple, good-natured man, loved by everyone in town. He'd sometimes help the ladies with odd jobs that their husbands ignored. Thank you for fixing the door, Rip. It's long-needed attention. Rip made toys for the children and taught them to fly kites and shoot marbles. They were always delighted with his stories and playful antics. Nary a dog would bark at him. And he loved sharing hours of sleepy conversation with friends at the King George Inn. We've not seen the likes of this since the days of Peter Stuyvesant. What think you, Rip Van Winkle? But Rip most enjoyed avoiding the chores that Dame Van Winkle had planned for him by escaping to hunt in nearby mountains. The Catskills. <laughs> Poorly named. Cats do not have skills. Rip Van Did you hear that? <gasps> Whoa. Hmm. Strange looking fellow. Let me see. Clothes are a tad out of style. Big beard, bushy eyebrows, heavy set. Mm, nope, nobody I know. Should I be scared? So, uh, need a little help lugging the old refreshments up to a party, huh? Well, it just so happens that I have some time on my, uh, well, hands. 
<laughs> Lead on. I was actually going to take the small one, but... Okay. So, what's your name? Hey, uh, where are we going? Hey, uh, what's in the keg? Do you think I asked too many questions? Have you always been this talkative? Wow, hear that? Sounds like rain. Great. I've had more satisfying conversations with a fire hydrant. Well, stranger, I was glad to help out, but I really need to... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, that wasn't thunder I heard. It was the sound of bowling balls. Hey, this is great! Must be league night. Okay, I'll stick around for one game, but then I... Was it something I said? Guys? Gentlemen? Huh? Huh? What's that? <clears throat> Let's go with Spawn. You bet. Go where? Ooh, sunshine and a bench. Looks like I might have my nap after all. Go! Oh! I'm assuming that was an accident. Now wait here. I won't be long. Never fear. While I'm on guard, the perimeter is secure. Bet you're waiting on somebody now, aren't you? Have we met, madam? You know, I had a little fella who'd wait for me when I was a young girl. Little fella? He'd sit out here just as long as it took for me to find just the right book. <laughs> what a nice lady. Well, enjoy your trip to the library, ma'am. Good morning. Can I help you? Oh, thank you. No, I just stopped in to see the library. I wanted to see if it had changed as much as everything else in this town has. <laughs> Hard to believe this is where I used to come every Saturday. Oh, how long ago was that? Goodness. Must have been over 50 years ago. Oh, my. I left Oakdale 40 years ago to practice medicine in Chicago. Thought it was high time I revisited my roots. Well, welcome back. And feel free to look around as long as you like. Dr. Brown. Thelma Brown. It's a pleasure to meet you, Dr. Brown. I'm Ellen Talbot, and I hope your visit's very special. Oh, thank you, Ellen. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> I'm guessing that's your dog out by the front door. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Looks like a keeper. It sure is. <laughs> Skills. All right, boys, watch and learn. Another strike! Hey, loosen up, guys. You look like you've been rolling gutter balls all afternoon. <laughs> What's the matter? Cat skills got your tongue? Ooh, tough crowd. Okay, then, drinks for everybody. Come on over. Step right up, gentlemen. No need to be shy. There's plenty to go around. <laughs> hmm. This stuff looks good. I think I'll sample a wee bit of this strange brew myself. Mmm. 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 Tasty. I like it. Got to remember to get the recipe before I go home. Well, enough of this. Let's get back to the game. All right. Have we got. Whoa. Hey. All of a sudden, I feel strange, really sleepy. <laughs> and so, Rip fell fast asleep. Dr. Brown, what a pleasant surprise. 
It certainly is, Ellen. More surprising than you know. Oh? Finally. Something in this town that hasn't changed much. <laughs> I grew up in this very house. So you remember the Gilmore family? Oh, I remember the Gilmores well. You say Wanda still lives there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the last time I saw her, she was just a little toddler. You know, we'll have to call her over to visit before you leave. You know, Joe, seeing Wishbone at the library this morning reminded me of my old dog, Champion. Well, it's unlikely he was quite as handsome. But now I know who buried those prehistoric soup bones in the backyard. Cream or sugar? A little sugar, please. I suppose Oakdale's changed quite a bit in 40 years. Everything's different. Well, I hardly recognize anything downtown. But this house, it's like it was frozen in time. <laughs> oh, I was so glad to see the green trim outside. Just like it looked when my parents moved in. And this is the dining room, lots of space, beautiful living area, and the study's in here. Did your folks build the house? Yes. I believe it was built um, 1919, the same year I was born. My father was the architect, and he designed everything, even the stained glass windows. And I love those. And this is the chair. This is my favorite room. <laughs> Me too. I used to curl up in the big chair and just read and daydream and imagine that I was the hero <laughs> in each of those wonderful books. I like this woman's style the moment I laid eyes on her. Ellen, do you think I could go upstairs and look at my old room? Oh, of course. And I bet I know exactly which one it was. <laughs> right this way. As we walk up the stairs, please notice the fine wood paneling left and right, all original, I might add. And this is the bedroom. Joe, dirty clothes. Pick them up. Thank you. I might have known you'd have my old room, Joe. So what do you think? Pretty cozy, isn't it? Yeah, I like it a lot. Well, I like what you've done with the place. Have you found the secret hiding place? Secret hiding place? Secret hiding place? <laughs> Unless they fixed it, that board comes out. I used to hide all my treasures there, especially the ones I didn't want my brother Robert to find. Go ahead, check it out. This one? Oh, that secret hiding place. <laughs> you know, I knew this was here all along. I just wanted you to find it for yourself. It seems stuck. Oh, here it comes. Ah, treasure. Looks dangerous. You go first. There doesn't seem to be anything in there. I may have cleaned it out long ago. Hello? Wait a minute. I smell something. Oh, excuse me. I think I feel something. Wow! It's a... It's a, uh... A something. A marble and a ball bearing? <laughs> the one with the swirls is a lovely glassy. And this is my prized steely shooter. Cool. Marbles were our video games, Joe. But just like today, we had to shoot straight. But we got to keep everything we hit. I won hundreds of marbles with this little gem. Life wasn't any less exciting back then, Joe. Just different. Looking at those marbles makes me think of something I hadn't thought of in years. What's that? A time capsule. I wonder if it's still there. What time capsule? Oh, <laughs> goodness, that must have been about 1929, 1930. My brother Robert and I put everything in a little metal box and buried it between two trees out front. What'd you put in it? Just little things we had around the house. I don't remember anything in particular. 
Might be fun to see what I really did put in that box. Well, let's find it. Ella? I'm up for a treasure hunt. Buried treasure? You're going to need someone who can dig. Let me see, who can I think of? Mm -hmm. Oh, me! It might be hard. The trees are different now. It's been too long. She probably feels a little lost. How could we help her? Hey, maybe Wishbone can help. I don't know. A lot of years have passed, Joe. Years pass. That's what happened to Rip Van Winkle. He took a nap for 20 years. Huh. What? Huh? Ugh. Where am I? Ooh, my head. Ugh. Did I sleep in the mountains all night? Oh, boy. I'm in Dame Van Winkle's doghouse now. Where is everybody? Hello? Hello! Guess the bowling team's left. Hm, they didn't even leave a trophy. Worse, they stole my rifle and left this worm-eaten, rusty excuse for a firearm. Oh, boy. Hm, guess I better get back to town. What am I gonna tell Dame Van Winkle? So, Rip Van Winkle returned to town. But the place had a strangely different look to it. Okay, everyone, you can stop worrying, I'm back. <laughs> I, hmm, it's funny. I don't recognize any of these people. Old man's got a funny beard, and old man's got a funny beard. <laughs> beard? I don't have a beard. My face is a little scratchy. Hmm. What? You stop that! What is going on around here? I know. Everybody's probably over at the King George Inn. <laughs> Remember Bunker Hill? The heroes of 76. The freedoms we have won. What's all this then? Elect me to Congress, and I will preserve the liberties that this flag stands for. Yeah! Whose flag is that? Here now, friend. Why do you carry a rifle on election day? Election day? Yes, yeah, so are you a federal or Democrat? Neither. I'm a poor fellow from this town and a loyal subject of King George III. Oh. Oops, wrong answer. He's a Tory, a spy, traitor! Away with this refugee, hang him! Hang him? Quiet, quiet, and silence, I say. Sir. You say that you are a native of this town. Whom do you know? Well, Nicholas Vedder will speak for me. Vedder died 18 years ago. Then Van Brummel, the schoolmaster. He was a general in the war and now sits in Congress. Oh, come, come. Everyone in this town must know me. I'm Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> Can this be happening? Last night I slept in the mountains and today my brain is addled. Everything has changed. Have I gone crazy? The yard seems changed. There are more trees now. This paved circle wasn't here when I was a girl. That house wasn't built either. I simply can't remember which two trees the box is buried between. Maybe they cut them down years ago. David's got an idea, Dr. Brown. Good. Oh, these are my friends, David and Samantha. I'm pleased to meet you. Hi. Uh, this shouldn't take long. Ha! Look, found it already. I don't think so. I happen to know there's a perfectly good chew bone buried there. Are you sure? Look, the signal is definitely metallic. Hey, my locker key. <laughs> Thanks for finding it for me. Yeah, these two trees don't look old enough. Hey, maybe we spawn onto something. Those two trees look old enough. 
Uh, you're welcome to look, but I've already checked out the area. I said I've already checked out the area. Oh, David. Nothing. What'd I tell you? Everything's different. Uh, well, we could try a subterranean sonar. Try what? Subterranean sonar. I could rig a device that would send high-pitched sound waves into the ground. With the right monitoring gear, we'd be able to see the relative size and shape of any buried object. You could make something like that? Sure, I think so. <laughs> There's wow. got to be an easier way. Yeah, preferably something that doesn't involve high-pitched sounds. Ooh. <sighs> huh? Hey, wait a minute. Joe, you better get Wishbone. Wishbone! Excuse me, Wanda? Joe, what's he doing? I don't know. Wishbone, what are you doing? Ha, don't worry. I'll get to the bottom of this. Ellen, he's up to something. Yes, I know. I'm coming. Your canine rototiller is destroying my lawn again. Today, on Digging Up Your Neighbor's Yard, I'm going to show you how to unearth rare and precious objects. My lovely assistant, Wanda, has graciously allowed us to use her yard. Oh, it's here. I know it's here. I know it's here. It's bingo! Is this it? It's a little piece of the past, Joe. Wanda, thanks for letting us dig up your yard. Oh, well, I guess it served a higher purpose. This box is in pretty good shape. Well, my brother dipped the whole thing in paraffin to make it more waterproof. You do the honors, Dr. Brown. <laughs> They're the marbles, Joe. <laughs> oh, and there's a picture of me and Champ. <gasps> Champ? Where? Let me see. Let me see. Ah, he's a handsome devil. He shares my noble berry. What is this? Oh, probably from the day that we buried the box. What was going on then? Hey, Mom, it's the whole rock plant. Oh, that was a big day in this town. Well, you know, they're closing it this month. EPA violations. Oh, what a shame. A lot of our friends worked at that plant. So many stories in this box. Hmm, stories. A story from the past is all Rip Van Winkle had. Good people of this town, I beg you, I implore you to hear my tale. After bowling with these strange men, I took a drink. I fell asleep. And here I am today. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, Rip. This old man won't hurt you. Rip? You called your baby Rip? What is your name, good woman? Judith Garnier. And your father's name? Rip Van Winkle. He went into the mountains 20 years ago and never came back. I was a little girl then. Judith, where is your mother? She died not long ago. Judith, I am your father. I'm Rip Van Winkle. Peter! I say, Peter Vanderdonk. You're the town historian. Do you recognize this man? Well, let's see. It's, uh... Oh, my goodness. It's... It's, it's Rip Van Winkle. Oh. <laughs> and have you heard tales of strange men bowling in the mountains? Well, yes. Legend has it. The ghost of the old explorer, Hendrik Hudson, and his men come back every 20 years to look down on the river and play nine pins. You are my father. Well, it's different, but it's home. <laughs> Have I ever told you the story of the time I played nine pins with the ghosts of Hendrik Hudson and his men? Yes, but tell it again. Well, <laughs> okay. While on one of my daily sojourns up into the Catskills, I happened to hear a strange voice calling out. Rip Van Winkle. Scary, huh? I'll do it again. Rip Van Winkle. Ooh, just gives me shivers. It was the most incredible thing. You should have been there. Oh. 
Here's an old program from an Oakdale Oaks baseball game. Oakdale had a baseball team? Of course. And every Friday night, my father would take us to the baseball game over at Legion Field. <laughs> I wish we had a baseball game to go to every Friday night. Yeah, me too. Joe, there's your paper. Does that mean I have to go back to the library? Library? Uh-oh. Time for a nap. Excuse me. Pardon me. Coming through. No, you've got your source right here. You can interview Dr. Brown. Can I? That would be the highlight of my visit. <laughs> Let's see, what would be the worst thing about sleeping for 20 years? Huh? Couldn't eat. Couldn't chase cats. Ooh, couldn't dig up Wanda's yard. Nope, 20 minutes should be just fine. <sighs> it was not a typical night at the lanes. Washington Irving wrote that Rip felt a vague apprehension stealing over him. No kidding, he was surrounded by ghosts. How did we make our ghosts seem so ghost-like? Aha! The post-production sound department. They and the camera crew created that odd feeling described by Washington Irving. For Rip Van Winkle, we recorded some of our effects for the slow-mo scene, such as the birds, at twice their normal speed, which is 30 inches per second. We then played them back at 15 inches per second, making them sound like they're half as fast as they originally were. Now I'm on top of sound. Creepy. That's enough to turn any dog's beard white. 